These are MI5 officers. They're preparing to do something they've never done before. OK, well, I am an agent runner in MI5's terms. As an investigator, I look at Al-Qaeda and Islamic State. I have sort of progressed as a team leader within counter-terrorist operations. I've been given access to the security service, where staff have agreed to share with me secrets that many of their families don't even know. Sort of wider friends and family. Um, as far as they're concerned, I work for the government. I think people probably suspect, but most people are sort of you know, they wouldn't actually go so far as to ask outright. <laughs> so I was uh, previously working as a teacher. You presumably um, didn't tell the class, sorry, sorry kids, I'm going off to work for MI5. That's right. Um, I'm not sure how that would have gone across, whether they would have believed me, um, but um, it's one of the things that we have to manage in our life is what we say to people about what we do. Do you know, it's funny because I guess if my friends or, you know, just acquaintances ever found out I worked here, I genuinely think they'd be really shocked because I, I, I do think there's a perception of the type of person that works for MI5 or the intelligence community in general. And I don't think I necessarily fit into that box. This is Karina, who agreed to speak to me a few days after the terror attack on London Bridge last November when the agency's secretive operations were once again being scrutinised. That afternoon when London Bridge happened, t tell me what it was like inside this building and, and what it was like to, to, to hear that news. So, of course, we see it on the TV screens. Um, you know, it's all on the news, first and foremost, and you walk through the corridors in the offices, everyone's just sort of almost glued to the TV screens, sort of, they, everyone's curious, they want to know more, they want to know exactly what's happened. It's upsetting and it's sad, but there is almost immediately a want to get involved and do what I can to help. Rob's role is to recruit and manage what they call agents. So an agent um, can be anybody. It's someone who is, um, as I say, a member of the public who works with us confidentially, in secret, um, to provide us with information. There are sometimes people with extreme views. We do have to speak to people who are connected to those extremist groups um, to understand really what's happening and help our investigators to, to make sure that bad things don't happen. But is there any moral conflict for you in, 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 in terms of working essentially in a team, perhaps with, with people who have done bad things or at the very least think bad things? I, I've never felt that kind of moral tension. I've been uh, conscious of speaking to people whose views I might not agree with, but fundamentally we're there to work together. And so even if someone holds some views that I might not necessarily agree with, fundamentally they're here to help and want to help. But are there risks? Because by approaching potential informants, MI5 has been accused of having a radicalising effect on some would-be agents. Is that something that you can see? And, you know, how, how, how do you explain that allegation? Every conversation we have is entirely voluntary. If someone doesn't want to talk to me, they don't have to talk to me, they can walk away. And there will be circumstances where we talk to someone who doesn't want to have that conversation um, because they've got extremist views or they've got a perception of MI5 that means that they don't feel it's right to talk to me or, or one of my colleagues. Emma has worked at MI5 for 20 years and recently led an operation to foil a plot to kill Theresa May. She's seen rapid change. When I first started doing counter-terrorist investigations as a desk officer, um, the majority of our investigations were all about networks, um, some quite grand plans, usually involving explosives, multiple sites, multiple people involved. I mean, that's really not the case now. The sort of spontaneity with which we see attacks happen now is something else that we have to adapt to. Right-wing terrorism, as you rightly point out, is, is a very different thing. You know, it's a very different um, set of motivations. It's a different target set. Um, and they have different um, ways of working, communicating with each other. Um, so, again, it's, it's, it's something that we have to evolve to and our tools and techniques need to evolve to to protect um, the UK. She says she doesn't live the swashbuckling life portrayed in the spy movies. 
you know, I have a normal life outside, I have a family, I get home, and so my world's taken up with bathing children, feeding children, putting them to bed, and the sort of daily routine that anybody else would have coming home from work. I think in the back of my mind when I've been working on sort of jobs that have had a spike of activity, there's always been, you know, sort of, I wonder what's going on now, you know. Um, and sometimes there are peaks of activity where, you know, you do get calls out of hours and you have to deal with things out of hours, but they are reasonably rare. So switching off, not completely, but, you know, walking away from the building, I have a normal life outside that occupies my thoughts and, and, and that's just like everybody else leaving work. We filmed at MI5 over three months and saw how the need for discretion sometimes draws staff together in ways you might not expect. We had um, secretly come dancing, <laughs> so a lot like Strictly, but um, we called it secretly come dancing, of course, as spies do. Um, and yeah, it was, it was good fun. Did you compete? No. I watched. Um, yeah, I wasn't ready to, um, to unleash my incredible dancing skills in front of my colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> Secrecy is what their work demands. Accountability is what it also requires. MI5 is having to adapt, not only to changing threats, but to growing scrutiny too. Rohit Katru, News at 10, inside MI5.